focus on taking notes. But additionally, I also don't want to be a distraction to you. Um, so, so my camera will be disabled once we get uh, right around the middle of the PowerPoint when we start to get feedback. Um, but, uh, but again, if you want to disable your camera as well as keep yourselves on mute, uh, that would be great. When we get to the questions, obviously, uh, you'll need to take yourself off mute. I will call each 1890 institution by name in alphabetical order, and then that institution representative can uh, make his or her remarks at that time. Um, so we're, we're going to do this similar to the uh, 1890 scholarships listening session a year ago, as a matter of fact, when we did that session where I called out each institution and, uh, and then that, that representative spoke at that time. And then at the end of the presentation, there will be an opportunity for uh, non-1890 participants to provide feedback. Um, so again, it, the process is going to be very similar to what we did a year ago uh, when we were getting feedback for the 1890 scholarships session. I'm going to just give another minute or two for, to ensure that we have all the persons on. Then what I'll do is we'll do a roll call. Uh, to ensure that we have um, to, to, well, to see who's, who's on and to see that we have representation across the system. Um, and then we will actually get started with the meat of the presentation. Um, just a, a, another, again, um, just another reminder, if you uh, are, are not speaking, you know, please just kind of, you know, please keep your, your lines muted. And um, and we will, and we will also sort of keep things um, administratively managed from our end. We'll, we'll we'll probably mute all of your lines so that we make sure that uh, there's no additional noise. We are going to record this session, um, which is another reason why we like to make sure that there's no other uh, uh, other noise uh, inadvertently. Um, you should be able to see the title slide on the screen. Um, you can also use the chat box if you if you'd like. Um, but again, when we get to the questions part, uh, you you will be giving your feedback verbally. And the other thing is, if you um, if you're going to be speaking, you should keep your responses to a minute or a one minute or less per. Uh, so that's. So if you're from Alabama A&M, for example, um, you would have a minute to give feedback on a particular question, and then we'll move to the next institution and so forth and so on. We want to make sure that we have uh, feedback, uh, but there's also that there's equity, um, equity in terms of how feedback is being shared. If you want to give me more feedback above and beyond today, you can certainly email that to me uh, and I will be happy to take that feedback uh, by email as long as you do so before Friday close of business. Okay, but today your feedback should be very concise under a minute uh, per institution. So we will begin uh, in about one minute. Okay, folks, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, you should see the, the, 
the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Again, uh, this is the Centers of Excellence at 1890 Institutions. Uh, this is a listening session. Uh, the purpose of, uh, of the session is to gather feedback uh, that will be used uh, for the agency in terms of administering uh, uh, federal funds for uh, centers of excellence at, at the 1890s. And uh, for those of you who do not know me, I, my name is Antonio McLaren. I am the 1890 uh, program leader or the national program leader for the 1890 programs portfolio at, at NIFA, um, which currently uh, has grown. We have six programs now. Centers of Excellence is one of the newer programs uh, that the agency has for the 1890s. Uh, this one and the scholarships for 1890s, uh, scholarships for 89 institutions, those are the two new programs to the portfolio. So we now have six programs uh, at the 1890 institutions. Uh, on this slide, you will see that's basically an agenda of what uh, is gonna be covered. And um, we're gonna have an introduction of the program. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the Farm Bill language and the funding appropriations. Again, I've, I've already talked about the session questions and responses should be one minute per institution. Uh, then we'll have additional feedback from the 1890 institutions. Lastly, we'll have feedback from non-1890 institutions as well as next steps. So uh, if you haven't seen this before, um, this is a map of the 1890 institutions. I just, just wanted to put that uh, as a slide in case we do have non 1890 participants online. Uh, so this is a map of the 1890 institutions. Uh, we do have 19, most of them predominantly in the Southern region of the United States, some in the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, and I think this is a great place for us to pause and do a roll call. So what I'm gonna do is, um, is call out each institution by, by name. name. And um, if you could just give me your name, uh, that way I know that that institution is represented, that that will be great. Okay. And I'm actually just going to call them out by using the map. So starting from my, from my right hand side, Delaware State. Do we have anyone from Delaware State on the line? Okay. Yes, we do. Yes, uh, yes, yes, we do. Yeah. I was on mute. Sorry. No problem. Yeah, Alvarez here. Okay, perfect. Marcus Alvarez, Delaware State University. Uh, okay. Cal Calavacharla, Delaware State University. Okay, thank you both. Okay, moving down, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Yes, uh, Escobar. Okay. Okay, okay, Moses Cairo and Jürgen Schwaz. Bob okay. Escobar. Stefan Tubene. Okay, thank you, Stefan. You're welcome. Okay, Virginia State University. Uh, Wendy Marce. Okay, anyone else from BSU? Okay. Uh, West Virginia State University. Anyone from West Virginia State University? Okay. Uh, let's go to Central State University. Is there anyone online from Central State University? Okay. Let's go to uh, let's go to North Carolina A and T State University. Shirley Hyman Parker. Okay. Hi, Shirley. Hi. Dean, you gonna say something? And Muhammad Ahmed now as well. Okay. Rosalind Dale. Okay. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you, Rosalind. I have you. Uh, let's go to uh, South Carolina State University. Okay. 
Anyone from South Carolina State University? Okay. Uh, let's go to Fort Valley State. Anyone from Fort Valley State University? Uh, Mark Latimore. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, Florida A&M University. Vonda Richardson. Robert Taylor. Tamarin oh, yeah, Timmons. Paul. Tamarin Timmons. Thank you, Tamarin. Marion Thomas. Okay, thank you, Varian. Harriet Paul. Thanks, Harriet. Okay, now uh, next we'll go to uh, Tuskegee University. Raymond Shange. Tasha Hagmar. Okay. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, Tasha. Okay, next, uh, let's go to Alabama A&M University. Anyone on from Alabama A&M? Okay. Let's, uh, let's go to Alcorn State University. Alcorn. Okay. Southern University. Okay. Uh, Prairie View A and M University. Anyone from Prairie View? Okay. Let's go to University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Anyone from UAPB? Okay. Langston University, are you on? Vernon Jones. Thanks, Dr. Jones. Uh, Whitaker is also here. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Whitaker. Okay, now coming around to Lincoln University. Uh, Jiang Yang is here. Adrian. Okay. okay, thank you. Where'd he go? Uh, two more. Uh, Tennessee State University. Antonio, we have four people from Tennessee State. This is Latif Ligari. Okay. Theatre Young. Carter Catlin. Nick Gowell. Okay. Okay, thank you. And last, um, Kentucky State University. Uh, Kirk Popper here. And Christina McManus. Okay. Thank you both. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I'm just going to now call out those institutions that I did not get an answer for previously. Um, I, West Virginia State University. Central State University.
South Carolina State University. Alabama A&M. Okay, Alcorn State. Southern University. Prairie View A&M. University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. And Lincoln University. Okay. Uh, in Lincoln, we have several, uh, I think, four people here. I'm sorry, what, what, which institution? Uh, Lincoln. Uh, I think we have four people here. Okay. Uh, who are the uh, four representatives from Lincoln? Uh, John Young is here. And also, I think uh, Regina Anderson and also Dr. Patan and uh, Andrew. Okay. Uh, and Tony Lang from uh, Florida A&M University. Okay, and what's your, what, I'm sorry, what's your name? Steven, Steven Leung. Okay, thank you. You also have James Brown from Fort Valley State University. Okay, thank you, James. Thank you. Anyone else? From the 1890s? Misty Terry just joined from North Carolina A&T. Okay, thank you. We've got Ken Johnson from the 1890 Universities Foundation. Okay, thank you, Ken. <clears throat> no, no, don't, don't leave, yeah. Yeah. Conrad Bonsi from Tuskegee University. Alton Thompson okay. from ARD. Paula huh? Faulkner from Paula Faulkner from North Carolina A T. Okay, thank you. More Neil from 1890 Universities Foundation. Yep, thank you. You have Albert Esso, AEA. Yes. Thanks, Alton. Thanks, Albert. Thank you. Okay, I think I have everyone. Appreciate your uh, taking the time to do that. I will, uh, I will still, you know, when we get to the questions, and there are three of them, I will still call out each institution uh, by name, because I want to ensure that um, everyone had the opportunity to provide input. So we will, we will now, let's go back to the PowerPoint. I'm gonna now talk about uh, um, uh, the 1890 Centers of Excellence program is really three sets of background information that, that I'm gonna present. So number one, I'm gonna talk about the Farm Bill. So with respect to the 2018 Farm Bill, Here's the background information. So it was authorized by section 7213. Um, and in terms of the authorization, there was really six areas of focus. And, and I assume most of not all of you have, have familiarized yourself with the language. So these are the six areas that, was, that were, were listed in the legislation. I'm not gonna read them all to you. Um, I think that they're all um, self-explanatory. But again, these are the six areas of focus uh, that were in the legislation. Um, with respect to the, to the legislation, there were really two requirements. The first one uh, is that the secretary shall recognize not less than three centers of excellence, each led by an 1890 institution. Secondly, is that um, not later than one year after the enactment of 
the Ag Improvement Act of 2018, which is the Farm Bill, and every year thereafter, the Secretary shall submit to the Committee on Ag of the House of Representatives and the Committee on Ag Nat Nutrition Forestry of the Senate a report that describes two things. The first is the resources invested in the Centers of Excellence established under paragraph one, which was the previous slide, and the work that's being done by those Centers of Excellence. Okay, so, so those, that really closes out the two requirements with respect to the Farm Bill program. Now I'm gonna to move to the next uh, uh, description in terms of the background. This is really gonna uh, uh, emphasize the 2019 federal fund appropriation. So with respect to the, to the uh, appropriation, NIFA received $5 million in discretionary funds to support centers of excellence at 1890 institutions, otherwise known as 1890 COEs. These funds were legislatively directed to support three, the three 2015 centers that were created in conjunction with the 125th anniversary of the Second Moral Act, which are listed as follows. Um, so you have the Center for Innovation and Sustainable Small Farms, Ranches, and Forest Lands, Center of Excellence for International Engagement and Development, and the last is the Virtual Center to Motivate and Educate for Achievement. So those are the three anniversary centers. This next slide now uh, provides you the results of the FY 2020 peer review process. Um, so. Uh, so based on that process, the following new awards were recommended and processed. Um, so for the Innovation Sustainable Small Farm Center, uh, that one would be led by Tuskegee University. For the International Engagement Development Center, that one will be led by the University, University of Maryland at Eastern Shore. And then the last one, the Virtual Center, uh, to motivate and educate for achievement will be led by the North Carolina a t State University. Um, all of these awards were just processed. Um, so um, these awards are now are official. Now I'm gonna move into the last section of background information. This is really gonna, uh, emphasize the FY 2020 federal fund appropriation, which is really the emphasis of this listening session. So with regard to that appropriations bill, uh, $6 million was authorized for centers of excellence at 1890 institutions. Now um, I'm going to go to uh, the questions. If you if you um, if you recall on the the invitation that was sent out, there were three questions that were listed in the invitation. Those three questions are the same as the ones that I'm getting ready to present. At this time, what I'm going to do, as I had said earlier, I'm actually going to disable my camera so that I can focus on taking notes as well as to minimize any distraction from the slides. Uh, at this time, if you'd like to do the same, you're more than welcome to do so. You can disable your camera. Um, if you're not speaking, again, you should be on mute. I will call out each institution by name. And, um, and at that time, that institutional representative uh, should be the only one speaking. Okay. Uh, once you have provided your input, just go back on mute and then I'll go to the next institution, so forth and so on. Just give me one second.
Okay, well, uh, we're gonna go ahead and begin. So the first question, what priority areas should be emphasized in the RFA? Okay, what priority areas should be emphasized in the RFA? And what I've done is I've, I've listed out uh, as a reminder, those 2018 Farm Bill priorities on the slide. So the first institution um, that should speak, uh, let's, we're gonna go in alphabetical order, so it makes it easy on you. So we're gonna start with Alabama A&M University. Anyone from Alabama A&M? Okay, uh, let's hear from Alcorn. Okay, Central State University. Okay, let's go to Delaware State University. For Delaware State. Yes. We like the student success. Uh, global okay. food security, we have the centers in which we are participating to implement that. And nutrition, health, and wellness. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go to uh, FAMU, Florida A&M. Good afternoon, this is Vonda Richardson. Um, we really would like to support the, the three that were um, uh, initially uh, funded, the Student Success, the MIA Center, the uh, Small Farms, <coughs> uh, and also the one for international engagement, which I guess mirrors the global, defense, uh, global food security and defense. Um, but also we would like to recommend um, nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life. Okay. Well, uh, hello. Yes. This is Steven here from FAMU. Uh, I, I don't know if I can add in. I know my, Mr. Richardson just mentioned uh, the priority area. Is there any limit to the priority areas that we can uh, suggest? There's no limit. Oh, I see. You know, uh, this is just my opinion. I, I think we should include emerging technologies because I, I think in the long run, uh, this is an area that will take increasing importance as we progress in our research and extension work because technology is something that uh, I, I think will always be necessary for us to do any, any future research and any kind of help that we want to uh, do for our farming people. Okay. Perfect, thank you. So Stephen, Stephen, I just wanna make sure that I captured that correctly. You said you wanted to, so number four, uh, the global food security and defense? No, he, and, okay. No, no, he said adding a number five would be emerging technologies. Yeah, I know, if we can, because I, I think in the long run, uh, emerging technologies, uh, it's something that uh, I think is essential for any, any kind of progress that we're going to make uh, in our research areas and in any kind okay. of assistance that we're going to provide. And, and, and by the way, uh, this is Robert Taylor. Uh, emerges, emerging technologies is number six here, right? Yes, yeah, yeah number six. Mm -hmm. Number six. And I would also like to add for FAMU number five since you said there's no limit. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Fort Valley State University. Yes, uh, following my friends at FAMU, priority for us would be the student success and workforce development. Uh, second would be farming systems mm -hmm. and real prosperity. Uh, nutrition, health, wellness. Mm -hmm. Then I would say global food security and emerging technologies. Okay. 
Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let's move to uh, Kentucky State. So uh, for us, you know, we'd like to, uh, to emphasize the original three that we've already started, uh, student success and uh, global food security and then uh, farming systems. And after those three, uh, we'd uh, like to recommend the, the, also the nutrition and health followed by the natural resources. Okay. And emerging technology would be at the bottom of our, our list. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Langston University. Um, okay, uh, from uh, Langston, um, we're, we're supportive of the original three, and we're an integral part of the farming system um, that uh, Tuskegee is working on, uh, followed by uh, student success, uh, nutrition, quality of life, global food security, and natural resources. And at the bottom, uh, we have uh, emerging technologies. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Let's go to Lincoln University now. Uh, hello, this is John. And uh, I think we will uh, continue to uh, focus on three original uh, existing uh, centers, which is uh, uh, student success, farm system, and the global food security. Follow that, uh, we would like to see the nutrition health and also natural resource uh, and environment. Uh, emerging technology will be bottom. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, the next institution. Uh, let me see, give me one second here. Make sure I don't skip anyone. <coughs> okay, North Carolina A&T. Um, for North Carolina a and our preference would be to continue with the three initial, initial ones that mirror uh, student success and workforce development, farming systems, rural prosperity and economic sustainability, global food security and defense, and we would like to add nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life. Okay. Got it. Okay, Prairie View A&M. Anyone from Prairie View A&M? Okay, uh, let's uh, South Carolina State University. Okay, Southern University. For Southern University, uh, this is Andre Johnson. Southern University, we would like to, our preference would be to continue with the previous three, Center for Student Success and Workforce Development, uh, Center for Farming Systems, Rural Prosperity, and Economic Sustainability, and the Center for Global Food Security and Defense. But we'd also uh, like to include nutrition, health, wellness, and the quality of life, uh, followed by natural resources. Okay. All right, got it.
Okay, uh, Tennessee State University. Uh, Tennessee State University would like to um, recommend student success and workforce development, nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life, global food security and defense, and emerging technologies. Okay. Thank you. Tuskegee University. Is Dean Hill on? <laughs> okay. Um, Tuskegee University would like to recommend student success and workforce development, nutrition, health and wellness and quality of life, farming systems, rural prosperity and economic sustainability, and global food security and defense. Huh? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, let's go to University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Good afternoon, this is Dozy Butler. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff recommends continuance of the first, um, the initial three, student success and workforce development, farming systems, rural prosperity and economic sustainability, and global food security and defense. Fourth would be nutrition, health, wellness, quality of life, the fifth, natural resources, energy, and the environment. And because we believe that emerging technologies can be subsumed and the previous ones, we are listed as six. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Virginia State University. Uh, we recommend uh, student success and workforce development, uh, nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life, uh, farming systems, rural prosperity, and economic sustainability, and global food security and defense. Thank you. Oh, forgive me, I uh, skipped over University of Maryland, Eastern Shore. Uh, thank you, Dr. McLaren. Uh, UMES would like to recommend uh, continuance of the three original or existing uh, centers, assuming the Global Food Security and Defense MIRAS, the International uh, Center. In addition, I uh, would like to prioritize nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life. Thank you. Uh, and West Virginia State University. Uh, yes, uh, we'd like to continue with the three centers, uh, the student success and workforce development farming systems, rural prosperity and economic sustainability, and global food security and defense, followed by natural resources, energy and environment, and nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life, and last, emerging technologies. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, for West, West Virginia State University, could you just list out the, um, the uh, Farm Bill priorities one more time? I want to make sure I have them in the right order. Yes. Um, we'd like to continue with the three centers that we have in place, student mm -hmm. success and workforce development, farming systems, rural prosperity and economic sustainability, global food security and defense, number three, Follow with uh, natural resources, energy and environment, mm -hmm. nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life, and last, emerging technology. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well done. Um,
I think I called out all 19 institutions, but was just to be sure, was there anyone that I missed? Okay, excellent. Uh, Antonio, uh, will, are you looking at the chat box as well? I'm, I'm only gonna be taking, so for, for, for these questions, uh, just give me uh, your feedback verbally. Okay, for Lincoln University, we would like to include all the six um, priorities. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just uh, j just just a reminder. Yeah, so for the for these questions, give them please give them to uh, give them to me. Uh, um, over the audio line, because we are recording this session. We want to make sure that uh, we, we do have all the feedback recorded appropriately. But if you want to give me some more feedback above and beyond, uh, then you can certainly do that by email. And I'll certainly welcome, I'll be welcome to, to accept those emails as long as they're sent to me before Friday, close of business. Okay, we're going to move on to the next question. Okay, so the next question really is, is dealing with the maximum award amount. So the question is, what should the maximum award amount be for each applicable center? What should the maximum award amount be for each applicable center? Okay, so let's go back at the top of the list, Alabama A&M. Okay, uh, Alcorn. Central State University, Delaware State University. For Delaware, we are <clears throat> uh, we are suggesting at least a million. Okay, uh, so at least a million. Do you uh, just to just to follow up? Do you have a maximum cap? And, and and if you don't, that's you know that's fine. I can I can you know this using the uh, minimum of one million is helpful. I just want to make sure that I I um, am able to you know get get the answers from each institution appropriately. Antonio, this is Lincoln University. What is the period for the award? I'm sorry, say, say, uh, could you ask that one more time? What is the period? What is the time? One year or two years or three years? So, so, that's, so that will be a, a, um, that's a separate, sort of a separate but related um, criteria. So for example, if, if you're gonna give, if in answer to this question, um, if, if you'd like to propose a uh, period of performance, you can certainly do that as well. So, okay. um, so, so for in your case, uh, for Lincoln University, you know, for your answer, if you have a period of performance that you'd like to recommend attached to your okay. maximum award amount, then you can do that as well. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Okay, so for Delaware State, um, minimum of one million dollars. Is that is that is that um, your your input for this question, or is there anything else? Yes, sir. <clears throat> it's, okay, uh, thank you. Just a minimum. Okay, perfect. Uh, FAMU. Uh, this is Vonda, um, and I think my other colleagues may chime in. Um, if we were looking at funding um, the, initial, the initial three in the addition of the nutrition, 
We want a minimum, would recommend a, min, a minimum of a million per center. Um, but we also would like to look at possibly having uh, varied amounts for, um, for, for the others. Um, they may not be at the, at, at the same level. And particularly with the nutrition and wellness, uh, considering the COVID um, situation, it seems like it may be um, you know, more useful, may, may be more advantageous to maybe ha ha have that one funded at a slightly higher level. Um, not sure of necessarily what those numbers would be, but, but having somewhat of a varied so that we can allocate additional funds, particularly for nutrition in light of uh, COVID-19. Okay. Thank you. Well, this is uh, Steve here, uh, Antonio. Yes. Uh, I know this is, uh, uh, what do you call, not directly related to the minimum or maximum, but I, I think personally that, uh, you know, to put a million dollars is, is the minimum, but I don't think the minimum of $1 million per center per year is okay. adequate, uh, given that there will be several universities associated uh, with, the, with the work or with the research or extension in each of the centers. So I would think if it is possible uh, that it be raised to at least $2 million uh, you know, per center. Because a million dollars, when you divide it uh, you know, uh, between four or five or, or, or six universities uh, and uh, expecting a lot to be done, I think uh, it'd be very hard uh, for, uh, for, for the schools to be able to really do effective work. If it is possible, uh, you know, I think we should make it at least $2 million, but minimum of $1 million is, is the bare minimum, I would put it this way. Okay, okay. And okay. Antonio, I, I would say the same, Sir Robert Taylor. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. For family, yeah. Okay, just give me one second. I'm just, I'm just making sure I have my notes. No. Okay. Uh, Fort Valley State University? Yes, I would say 50 million. I mean, 1 million doesn't sound like enough to be talking about 1890s as, as a collective body. And this is a maximum award, so that's not sell ourselves cheap. So I would say as a maximum award for each center, 50 million. And let's see what they actually end up giving us. That's not excellent crumbs. I could use one million by myself, so <laughs> not a whole center. Okay, I just wanted so I just wanted to to um, and I, you know I'll I'll will certainly re record that um, for the record, but I also want to point out in terms of uh, what we have, we have six million dollars um, that's been authorized. Six. Um, no, no, six. We have six million. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have six million. Um, so, with respect to the total pot of six million, uh, you know, going back to the question, you know, what would what should be the maximum award amount for each center, if if we have six million dollars? Then I would say six million. Okay. 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 Perfect. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, so the next uh, institution, Kentucky State. Um, I just got off my calculator. <laughs> um, we're going to recommend a, a minimum of, uh, of 1 million also. And, you know, the cap is problematic because we all would like it to be higher, but uh, I, I think the cap would be uh, uh, would be five million at this point. Okay. Thank you. I want to go to Langston University. Uh, yeah, it seems to me that um, we should uh, divide the uh, the centers into two groups. Uh, the original three that um, that have been uh, that we've been talking about, and those uh, should probably be allocated a minimum of a um, million dollars, 
And um, the other three, uh, based on the responses, uh, seems to me uh, that we might um, uh, consider a minimum of less than a million dollars for those. Um, and the additional, the remaining funds uh, could then be placed into uh, the original three centers. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, Lincoln University. Okay, uh, here's Jung, and uh, uh, I think that we only have a, a total six million dollars for three or six center. So practically, we would like to recommend uh, uh, between uh, one million to two million. So minimum one million, maximum two million. Okay. Uh, Antonio, this is a question. Um, is the six million for, is it total for all the centers or is it per center? The six million dollars that we have is, it reflects the total amount of money we have in the pot. Okay, so, so it is for all the centers? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, next institution, North Carolina A&T. Um, okay, for North Carolina A&T, we recommend 1.1 million for student success and workforce development. For farming systems, rural prosperity and economic sustainability, 1.34. For global food security and defense, 1.34. And for the new center, nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life, 2 million. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, South Carolina State University. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, I think I skipped uh, Prairie View. Prairie View A&M. Okay, now uh, South Carolina State University. Okay, uh, Southern University. For Southern University, uh, uh, 1.1 million for the uh, MIA Center, 1.3 million for uh, the Small Farm Center, uh, 1.5 million for the Global Food Security, and 2 million for the uh, Center of Excellence in Nutrition, Health, and Wellness. Okay, do me a favor, uh, Southern University, could, could you repeat? Repeat all that just one more time. I want to make sure I have it captured right. Okay. Again, for the uh, for the Mia Center, we recommend yep. one one million. For the small farm, farm farming system, we recommend one point three million. For the Center for Global Food Security and Defense, we recommend one point five million. And finally, for the Center of Excellence in Nutrition, Health, Wellness, and Quality of Life, we recommend two million. Okay. Perfect. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Tennessee State. Oh, uh, Tennessee State is one million per year per set. One million per year per center. Got it. All right. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, Tuskegee? Tuskegee recommends a, mi a minimum of 1 million and a maximum of 2 million. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Um, good afternoon. We recommend, given the pot, the total pot of $6 million, we recommend 1.1 million for student success, workforce development, 1.3 for farming systems, rural prosperity, and economic sustainability, 1.5 for global food security and defense. And because of all of the implications of, uh, implications of COVID-19 on the vulnerable populations that we serve, we recommend the remaining 2.1 million go to nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Um, <clears throat> we recommend that uh, a, a, at least no center should get less than, uh, than a million. Uh, but in terms of uh, the individual uh, centers, uh, uh, mirror the, the recommendations just made by uh, Pine Block. So 1.1 million for the MIA Center. Uh, 1.3 for the farming systems, 1.5 for um, uh, global food security and defense, and uh, somewhere around 1.8 million uh, for the health, uh, nutrition, wellness, and quality of life. Okay. Dr. Kara, if you could just repeat uh, the breakouts for the last two, the, for the global center and the, and the uh, nutrition uh, center? 1.5 million for the uh, global center and 1.8 uh, million for the uh, nutrition, health, wellness, and quality of life. Okay, perfect. Right, thank you. Uh, Virginia State University? Uh, we recommend minimum one million and uh, maximum two million. Okay. Thank you. West Virginia State University. Yes, um, we recommend uh, one million dollars for each of the existing centers. Uh, $1 million for the natural resources and environmental uh, sciences, and $2 million for the nutrition, health, and wellness quality. So $1 million minimum, $2 million maximum. Okay. Huh? Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure, Dr. Toledo, you said one million each for the anniversary centers, correct? Yes, for the centers that we have uh, currently going, and then uh, put two million dollars for the nutrition, health, and wellness center, and one for the natural <laughs> resources and environmental. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I think I, I did call on everyone, but that, was there anyone that I missed for this question? Okay. Well done. We're going to move now to the next question. Okay, so this question really refers to reporting and, and evaluation. So in regards to the reporting and, and evaluation plan, are there specific metrics that the centers should track? 
again, in regards to the reporting evaluation plan, are there specific metrics that the centers should track? Okay, so we're gonna start off again at the top of the list, uh, Alabama A&M. Okay, Alcorn State. Central State University. Okay, Delaware State University. Yes, uh, <clears throat> we need to track the, the number of institutions participating for a center. And um, the um, the the outputs that <clears throat> will allow us <clears throat> to show the progress from baseline. If, for example, with the <clears throat> with the MIA center, it would be you know students entering and and entering the universities and going out to the to the workplace. Um, for nutrition, you know, we would need to have baseline of the communities we are serving and then what has improved um, and how many people we have reached out to. So those are some of the metrics that I think in the area of global food security and defense, um, how have our students uh, benefited from international experiential learning? How many partners we would have collaborated with in terms of institutions in different countries? Um, and so on. Uh, in natural resource, energy, and environment, what, how are things like our curriculum have changed to capture new areas to, to measure for our students, for our students' training, and similarly to for emerging technologies. So those are some of the areas I think we would really have to ensure we capture the metrics around those. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, Florida A&M University. Uh, hello, uh, Vonda here. Um, overall, if we're looking at just the overall metrics for centers in general. I think the specific metrics that were in the previous RRA, R, RFA are, um, are sufficient. Okay. Um, but I want, would want the centers to focus because we're looking at teaching research and extension, making sure that those metrics speak to developing a product that the workplace needs, that industry and academia and public and private sector needs. Uh, as well as contributing to the generation of new knowledge. And then specifically for me, um, my, I guess I'm, I'm a little biased, uh, looking at my, uh, behavior modification relative to, to, to people and improving people's lives and, the condi and, and their condition. Um, as long as those metrics speak to the centers actually addressing those areas. <clears throat> I think, I think the, um, the previous R RFA ones are, are sufficient. And just leave it up to when they do the, the RFA that they can put those specific as you drill down based on the, you know, what, what areas they're going to address with the center. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, uh, Fort Valley State. Uh, yes, when it comes to student success, yeah. when we think of things like uh, enrollment growth, a retention rate, four and six year graduation rate and job placement. For farming right. systems, some sense of improved economic feasibility of the farm 
farming system that we suggest or participate? How those farmers compare with those in the surrounding community that were not part of the plan? Uh, nutrition, how do we reduce uh, health-related diseases? So some sense of health monitors, high blood pressure percentages, diabetes, uh, cancer, and how participating in this uh, center would change that course. Then global food security, uh, the student's placement when it comes to those who travel overseas versus those that did not, and did it influence the number of job opportunities by participating in a global food security center? That's it for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kentucky State. Uh, Dr. Pomper had to leave the call, so I, um, I believe um, the evaluations that were included um, in the original RFA um, should be relevant uh, for most of them, although the student tracking um, ones will be need to be fairly specific um, with the four-year graduation rates, especially. Um, emphasized and uh, workplace workforce uh, placement post-graduation. Okay. As well as uh, number of institutions involved in each of those centers. Okay, number of institutions, got it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next institution is uh, Langston. Uh, okay, um, uh, we endorse all the uh, the previous thoughts, uh, but uh, just to add a few additional things. Uh, obviously, the uh, workforce development uh, piece and in, um, in the Mir Center uh, ought to be emphasized in terms of the number of students that are engaging in experiential learning um, activities, uh, not only the extent to which they are in, they're actually getting experiential learning opportunities, but uh, the success that, um, uh, that uh, they're experiencing uh, in terms of their retention and um, going on to be employed uh, by, uh, by the companies with which they would have uh, done their experiential learning. Um, for the farming systems, uh, rural prosperity. Now, normally, uh, it seems as though we focus on the first part of that, um, and uh, we've been somewhat leaving out the rural prosperity and economic sustainability. Um, and so the, uh, I think we ought to emphasize um, the impact uh, on issues such as poverty and uh, focus a little bit on the uh, rural labor market. Uh, for health and nutrition, um, the previous points, I, I do endorse uh, them and, and also focus uh, quite a bit on um, uh, the food security problems that uh, exist in, in many rural and urban inner city communities. Uh, emerging uh, technologies, um, especially in this day and age, uh, we ought to uh, look at the extent to which uh, many of our minority and on the serve communities are uh, incorporating uh, new technologies in everyday life and, um, and also in the educational system. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, the next institution is Lincoln University. Uh, here is John, and uh, I think uh, uh, when each center uh, provides uh, uh, 
progress report uh, that should include the measurable uh, outcome and uh, each uh, uh, a measurable uh, output. And uh, for each accomplishment, they should have an outcome and an impact. So they should have some kind of, for, for, for example, like a student success. And uh, how many students you have recruit, how many, you know, are returned, how many uh, are graduate, uh, are graduates, something like that. So we have to have some kind of measurable uh, output. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, the next institution, North Carolina A&T. Hi, um, we believe that the metrics that were highlighted in the 2019 RFA are sufficient and appropriate. Uh, namely, these are located on page 14 and 18 of that RFA, and it reflects the outcome, the output, and the impact that these uh, centers will have had on their respective communities. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Prayer View a &M. Okay. Uh, South Carolina State University. Okay. Uh, Southern University. Uh, we we also think the specific metrics identified in the previous R RFA are are sufficient uh, to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, Tennessee State University. Okay, um, one would be the ability to leverage the federal dollars and what can be leveraged from those and, and, and matches and things like that. Um, two, the new knowledge that's created. Three, the, the impact on human behavior or production. And four, is the uh, level of collaboration with institutions and other interested parties. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right, got it. Thank you. Uh, Tuskegee University. So we believe that the metrics for the previous RFAs are sufficient and also you know, uh, taking into account the number of institutions participating in each of the centers, uh, the number of plans, reach the, in the impact, as well as the output and outcome. All right. Uh, let me add one uh, <clears throat> question of process. Uh, if there's a way we could quantify how we work with cross disciplines and cross institutional uh, processes uh, and link those to the innovations and outcomes. So not just looking at what happened, but is there a way we can put value to the way we did it and learn from that? Okay. So Dr. Hill, just um, just make sure I got it correct, is you're looking at, or you'd like to look at how uh, we are able to um, to quantify the actual process that's, that takes place. Yes, I'll give one example. We just uh, created test kits here. The only mm -hmm. way that that happened is approved by the state and we're gonna uh, be able to implement those for the, for the virus was that the health units on campus and the ag units, vet units, biology, the biology, those people came together and uh, it took that synchronization for a product or outcome to occur. So we're looking at the outcome, that's getting all the publicity, but what about that process that we could quantify and then share that? How do we get that done? Hope that helps. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. 
Yep, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, University of Arkansas, Pine Bluff. Uh, good afternoon again. Uh, all of the uh, original uh, metrics in the RFA should be considered, but I just want to spell out, I mean, particularly mention one other one, that it should also be measured against the success and bringing together universities, traditional and non-traditional industry partners and organizations uh, to share their resources and to ultimately improve the quality of life uh, of the people that we primarily serve. So success okay. in bringing together uh, partners to achieve our goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Um, <clears throat> so in addition to uh, uh, it just in synergy with what's already on the RFA. I think it's, uh, it would be useful to document just how many projects uh, are supported, uh, both in terms of uh, dollar numbers, but also in terms of um, how many universities are engaged in each center, and uh, in terms of just the uh, faculty, uh, disciplinary uh, involvement in, from different disciplines and uh, some measure of uh, uh, other stakeholder uh, engagement uh, and how that could be measured. And of course, there are also the, some of the more specific uh, deliverables in the, in the individual projects. But as well, um, I think uh, an aspect is how to grow the center. So I'd also think in terms of other leveraged uh, programs that the center, uh, the centers uh, allow the universities to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, Virginia State. Uh, Virginia State, uh, I think the matrix included in the previous RFA is sufficient. Uh, but I would like to add that we need to track the number of 1890s involved in each of the centers. And also the how these funds were used to leverage other uh, funding from other sources. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. And West Virginia State University? Yes, I'm, I'm in agreement with my colleagues as it relates to uh, the current metrics are appropriate. And I also like the fact that we can uh, include uh, a metrics of sustainability and, and leveraging the uh, the resources, that's a good metric to have. Um, and also um, the, the metric as it relates to developing new programs among all uh, 89 institutions. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, and I think I did call out everyone, but was there anyone that I missed? Okay. Okay, well done. Antonio. Uh, yes. This is Robert Taylor. I'd like to add uh, one more. Sure. And, and, uh, and might be even two. That is the, for Florida a the inter, intra and cross disciplinary activity of the centers. Mm -hmm. That is the inter, the intra and the cross disciplinary activity of the centers. I think we ought to, you know, try to connect things across the centers. And um, an another one, which might have been what people have said, global fingerprint and impact on food and nutrition. That's global fingerprint and impact on food and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, I got it. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna move now. Um, this is um, more of a general question where we're looking to obtain additional feedback. Um, so is there any additional feedback from 1890 institutions? And again, um, if you can keep your responses to a minute a piece, that would be great. But again, I'm, and I'm saying it again, if you'd like to give me some more feedback, uh, beyond that, certainly by email would be more appropriate. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and still call out institutions one by one. And you can, at this point, any other feedback that you'd like to say, you can certainly get, uh, provide that at this time. Let's start off with Alabama A&M. Okay, Alcorn State. Central State. Uh, Delaware State. I think we have covered the, the range of things that have been highlighted by everyone. So I think we're okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Florida a &M. I rest. I don't know if any of my colleagues had anything else uh, that they would want to add. No, I, I don't have any additional <laughs> feedback. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Neither do I, Robert Taylor. That is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, Fort Valley State University. Nothing here. Dr. Lattimore. Okay. Dr. Lattimore, you there? Sorry about that. I was on mute. I said I do not have any 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 additional comments. Uh, anything to add? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kentucky State University. Uh, we don't have anything to add except for to thank you for this opportunity to provide the feedback. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's go to Langston. Uh, nothing to add. Okay. Thank you. Lincoln? Uh, nothing so far. Okay, thank you. North Carolina a and um, I don't, Dean and Medna, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I don't have anything yet. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Prairie View a &M. South Carolina State University. Okay, Southern University. No, we have nothing else to add. All right, thank you. Uh, Tennessee State University. Nothing, we are good to go. All right, thank you. Tuskegee. Uh, just that your inclusive process speaks by Oh, okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, let's go to University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. We have no additional comments at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. University of Maryland at Eastern Shore. Um, Antonio, I just wanted to, to say one little thing. And sure. that is that... Uh, you know, we as 1890s are really committed to see this center succeed, which is why I think uh, it's important to continue investing in the existing centers so we can really build up what we, what we are starting. I think that is a critical thing because otherwise uh, not continuing funding means activities uh, uh, may stop if there's no additional funding. So I think that's a really important consideration as you uh, consider how to prioritize the next um, 
uh, topics for the next RFA. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Virginia State University. Uh, no, I don't have any uh, additional comment. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, West Virginia State University. Um, nothing to add. Just just one uh, quick comment uh, to the sure. fact that uh, we, at some point, I, I remember um, listening to a conversation where we uh, were wondering as it relates to the emerging technologies, that emerging technologies can probably be one of the components of each of the centers mm -hmm. in itself. So uh, just something to uh, Think about it. I mean, all, all of us can have emerging technologies in each of the centers. That was a conversation that was brought uh, before. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I have I have that noted. Okay. Okay. I appreciate. Uh, all the additional feedback before I move forward. Is there anything else? Last call. Okay. Hearing none. Um, at this point, is there any feedback that NIFA should consider uh, from non 1890 institution participants? So if you are not in an 1890 institution, uh, but you're on the line and, and you'd like to provide feedback that you think will be helpful, uh, please provide it at this time. Is there anyone from a non-1890 that would like to provide some feedback? Antonio, this is Mort. Yes. Mort with the 1890 Universe Foundation. Mm -hmm. And thanks for organizing the session. I think it's beneficial and fruitful as we move forward. Um, when we started this process of the Centers of Excellence, we had discussions on um, starting off with about eight to 10 centers and we worked this down to the six that are listed in the Farm Bill. Mm -hmm. And because of the initial funding of 5 million, we were only able to implement three, but these three, three were not listed in the Farm Bill precisely as they are um, back in 2015. So, um, we thought that these three centers link closely with three of the six. And therefore our recommendation is to continue these three centers. The critical question from a legal standpoint is how do you ensure that these three centers are, con are continued um, if their title are not precisely as listed in those six, but we want them to continue but they have to, they should be merged in the six, within the six. Okay. And we definitely support that context. And because of the level of funding, we realize that to have a meaningful center below 1 million or 1.5 million to sustain is not a sustainable amount. So that's why we are suggesting um, a, a phased in approach whereby a center is added. So you would go up to four and then continue in future years that we can increase that if we can get our appropriations as listed in the farm bill at $10 million. Okay. So that's why we are suggesting a phased in approach from three to four, another year, another cent or two, again, based on the level of appropriation. Okay. And I support the recommendations regarding the metrics and the um, assessments and evaluation of the centers as was previously listed. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mort. I have all, I have all your feedback noted. Uh, anyone else from uh, non-1890 institutions that would like to provide feedback? Uh, Dr. McLaren, this is Stephanie Freeman, Dr. Stephanie Freeman. Hello, everyone. I'm a program specialist, but someone put in the um, chat additional possible metrics across various centers, extension, outreach, teaching, and learning success in online classes and programs. 
Okay. Okay, I will make a note of that. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for pointing that out. Okay, anyone else? Last call for non-1890 institution participants. Okay. Okay, so um, getting down to the end of the, of the slideshow. Uh, so in terms of next steps, you know, we will post a recording of the session to the NIFL website. And, uh, and additionally, just as a reminder, additional comments if you have written feedback that you'd like to share, send them to me directly uh, to my email, which is listed on the slide for you, antonio.a.mclaren at usda.gov by close of business on May 22nd, which is Friday. Um, and again, in the email, you can be as long and, and, and voluminous as you'd like. Uh, we wanna make sure that we have all the feedback uh, collected and um, that way we can begin to analyze it and uh, that would really help us with respect to moving forward with the development of an RFA that's reflective of the 1890 institution uh, stakeholder feedback. So um, uh, the other thing is in terms of um, in terms of timeline, because um, I know that's that's probably a question that's that's out there. Uh, I don't have any initial time, uh, time frame or timeline in terms of when awards will go out. Um, obviously, we are, um, you know, with COVID and, and everything that's taking place, you know, it, it has um, certainly, you know, delayed some, some things on our end. Uh, but I will, you know, continue to, to work and I'll begin the, the um, development of the RFA as much as I can before uh, I leave the agency next month. So if you do have any, you know, any questions beyond Friday in terms of the program, you can certainly, again, contact me directly. I will do my best to answer questions. But as for right now, I don't have any, I don't have a sense in terms of when uh, the RFA will be posted or, um, or, or when the awards will be made final. Uh, but we do expect as an agency to, uh, to, be, to be able to put on an RFA so that funds are uh, made available to the institutions prior to the end of FY 2021. Um, so, so that is the only expectation that I can say. That again, the awards would be made available before the end of fiscal year 2021. And with that, I thank you. I appreciate your time and attention to the session. Um, again, the feedback is, is, is very valuable. And um, I will be, I'll be sure to send out a notification to everyone to let, to let you know when the recording has been posted. Um, again, uh, close of business this Friday. Um, it doesn't matter, I, I'll just say before midnight, before midnight on Friday, if you can send me all your feedback, that will be great. Um, and feel free if, if there's anything specific or anything um, that you'd like to talk to me about in the meantime, uh, call me directly and I'll be sure to be available. Um, I'd also like to take this time to, uh, to recognize, uh, you heard Stephanie, Stephanie Freeman speak earlier. So Stephanie Freeman is a new program specialist in the agency. She um, has been with us for I think the last uh, several months or few months. She will be um, working in support of the 1890 program's portfolio. Um, and I'd like to recognize her now for all of her efforts to set up this webinar session, this webinar session uh, as well as um, uh, being available to support uh, all of you going forward. So um, thank you, Stephanie. Also like to recognize Katrina Hanks, 
uh, who's uh, the assigned program specialist at this time. Uh, all of you, I think, know Katrina. Um, she and I have worked uh, together uh, closely over the last uh, four, four or five years in managing the 1890 programs portfolio. So, I, so thank you, Katrina. Um, and then the last person that I'd like to quickly recognize is Dr. Suresh Warren, who is the acting deputy director uh, at NIFA. Um, he is a, a, a high and extreme advocate of the 1890 system. He will also provide continuity as well um, as we move forward. So uh, I, I especially want to thank Suresh for all they continue to do for the system, uh, for NIFA, and, and, but especially for the 1890 programs. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and end the session. Again, thanks to all of you for all, all that you do at the 1890s, especially now with the pandemic. I wish all of you well as institutions are looking to probably uh, open back up. If you need anything in the meantime, feel free to call me directly or email me, and uh, I look forward to serving, serving you uh, as we move forward. Thanks Antonio, again. Antonio, can I jump in before you? Okay. All right. Thanks, Suresh. Yeah, yes. yeah, feel free. Yes, my name is Suresh. Uh, I just want to jump in and acknowledge Antonio McLaren and Katrina Hanks. I have had the pleasure of working with them for a long time. Uh, they are very highly regarded, committed public servants. They have done a lot for the 1890 program. Thank you, both of you, for your friendship, for your service, and wish you all the very best. Thank you, Suresh. And thanks, thanks to all of you again. We appreciate it. Um, we're here to serve you. Please let us know how we can be of service. Thanks very much, Antonio. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.